This is from the Daily Mail. Judge asks Trump lawyer if president would be immune from prosecution for using SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival in explosive courtroom showdown. This is a really, really great story. And it's a very important story for all of you. This is an excellent way to help people understand that these issues in law are nuanced and the headline does not accurately portray what is being uh, uh, the information being conveyed. First, let me start by shocking all of you by saying it is a fact and it is true. In this argument, it makes absolute sense and it is reasonable and rational to argue if the president ordered the assassination of his political rival, you could not prosecute him unless he has been impeached and convicted already. That's the statement. The judges tried to make it seem like it was some egregious and shocking thing that such an argument would be made, but it does make sense because there actually is an official arg an argument for an official course of action in which a president or politician would assassinate their rival. I'll give you a simple explanation. President A learns through the Senate Intelligence Committee or, or the House Intelligence Committee or whatever, Foreign Affairs, top secret information that a political rival of his has been making deals with a foreign adversary and is going to be meeting with them in a foreign country to deliver top secret nuclear code information from the United States. Unfortunately, they discovered this much too late and they need to put a stop to it. The president goes to a federal judge who reviews the evidence their arguments are made and a warrant is issued. The president then orders this man must be stopped by any means necessary. After this political rival is caught in the act of selling state secrets, an act of treason, when U.S. forces try to apprehend and arrest him, he resists and draws a weapon and is killed by the president's forces. The assassination of a political rival. Now, perhaps you can argue that they mean like just taking him out. In that instance, as I described it, there would be no impeachment. Congress would say, no, we were the ones that delivered the intelligence that this man had betrayed his country. And oh, a judge signed off on the warrant for his, for his apprehension and or execution for treason. In which case, you could not prosecute the president for taking this action as no one in Congress would believe a crime had been committed. Now, if Donald Trump or any president just straight up killed their political rival for political power, instantly in Congress, they would be impeached and convicted and then... They could be criminally charged. The important thing to understand here is that were this to not be the case, as Democrats are arguing, this could mean that states or elements of the federal government could criminally charge a president whenever they feel like it before, uh, before, during or after they're even in office. If they feel threatened by him and the founding fathers were concerned, this would disrupt the political process. A man announces he's going to run for office. So what happens? A rival political uh, actor in government decides I'll criminally charge him so that he can't win. And that's exactly where we are. Yeah, no, um, it's interesting, right? Because it it's really a question of process, as you mentioned. So saying something like he would have to be impeached first is like saying he would have to be arrested first. It's just part of the process. It doesn't mean it's something he's allowed to do. It means that we actually have a, a process laid out for how that's taken care of. This, this seems like there is a process here. Uh, Trump's lawyers have made a completely sound argument that I believe is correct. You can't accuse a president of committing crime. So in, in this instance, we're talking about Trump investigating voter fraud. Mm -hmm. It's actually the duty of the, the executive branch to investigate voter fraud, should there be any. But because there's a conflict of interest in that it was Trump's election, they're arguing it was criminal activity. Well, I believe it is correct. Trump should be, uh, uh, he, he, there, there should be an investigation as a conflict of interest. The determination was uh, he was impeached and then he was acquitted. How could you criminally charge someone who's been acquitted for this very thing? They're going after him. Why? The arguments to the Supreme Court are the point of the Democrat process. Create or so they're in a federal a federal appeals court right now and making these arguments on immunity. And the Supreme Court is going to hear Trump's case on the ballot uh, issue. But right now, if these judges come out and say the president is not immune, then we are inching towards absolute dictatorship and the collapse of the republic. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's a pretty great takedown. Um, great analysis right there, because you're right. There is a process. There is a procedure that we have to go through. I mean, the, 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 he has to be impeached. He has to be convicted uh, in, in the Senate. That hasn't happened here. And um, I, there is that is the argument exactly that the well, Trump may, attorneys are making is that they have a presidential immunity, that it is there for the reasons that you've cited. This this case they're bringing against them 
is the offense. Mm-hmm. It, it, the, the offense is not to criminally charge Trump. That's a byproduct. The offensive attack against our republic is this. For the judges to rule, presidents can be criminally charged. Then the next time an America first candidate, let's say, let's say in eight years, Vivek Ramaswamy is the, is the front runner. What will happen? Federal agents to prevent him from winning will file criminal charges against him. Let's say he actually gets elected. Let's say, let's say there's a backroom deal. And he goes to the establishment and says, look, there's a few things that I want to do for this country, but I agree to play ball with you on terms on foreign policy. They say, okay. Then he gets elected and says, nope, I'm going to play things my way. They go, okay, you're under arrest. We're going to criminally charge you now. It doesn't matter who you are, if you're the president or not. It doesn't matter if the people want you elected. If the Democrats win the ability to criminally charge a sitting president, no election will ever matter ever again. Yeah, I mean, I think that that does make sense. And I'm not, I mean... I don't have a whole lot of faith in in most of the judges and and judicial system that is trying Trump. I think that most of these uh, most of these cases should have been thrown out. Um, I think the one in uh, about the what was it? Actually, no, I'm not. I, I think they maybe maybe Georgia has something, but either way. Um, so I don't have any faith that they're gonna that that the judge will decide you know in a in a fair way. If you listen to these judges. You would come to the conclusion they will not judge in a yeah. fair way. I mean, mm-hmm. so so I mean, as much as as again, this is this goes back to my point of why I'm so, why I'm so black pilled. I don't think that the justice system is treating yeah. any of this fairly, and it, and the people that are that are prosecuting tend to be Democrats. You know, the the opposing party. The it just doesn't. I don't see how this is in any way fair how why the american people aren't aren't saying look this is clearly political and and making more noise about this well yeah i mean why would we expect a fair outcome when none of this is fair to begin with the fact that he's even gone to trial donald trump has been more investigated and he's been more um he's had more charges brought up against him than any president in recent history and are you going to sit here with a straight face and tell me he's been the most corrupt? That's ridiculous. No. We're, more corrupt we're, than George Bush, more corrupt than Bill Clinton, more corrupt than uh, Barack Obama. I'm, it's completely we're, we're it's in complete modern insanity. We, we are absolutely watching the erosion of the of the republic. We we are, did you guys see uh, uh, what was it a couple days ago that senator from New Hampshire said, "quote a yeah. democracy if you can keep it." Benjamin and embarrassing, mm-hmm. embarrassing, uh, intentionally erasing history. Why? Here's here's what I try to explain to people. Democracy does not mean rule by majority. They think it does. Democracy means rule by the absolute slimmest of minorities. What people think a democracy will be, 10 people ask what's for lunch and everyone votes. People think democracy means six people say we want pepperoni pizza. Congratulations, you got pepperoni pizza. I'll tell you what democracy is. At Occupy Wall Street, they needed a way to keep supplies dry. So they used to have these things called general assemblies where the whole group of Occupy gets together and then they'll, you know, petition everybody and then raise their hands and wiggle their fingers if they like things. The idea was, hey, we got a bunch of clothes and supplies that are getting wet from the rain. We need plastic bins to store them. So if it rains or snows, they will not be destroyed. Simple, right? Well, you'd think in a democracy, the average person assumes you're going to get a yes or no vote, right? That's not what happened. What happened was everybody said all in favor of buying the bins. The no's have it. Why? Well, Plastic is bad for the environment, so we can't have plastic. Okay, well, what's the solution? There's no other material. We're not going to get a glass one. You're not going to get a a wooden sealed basket with rubber or anything, right? Well, how about this? How about we get recycled, reused bins? So that way we're not contributing. Okay, now we've got a proposal here. All in favor of recycled plastic bins. The no's have it. Why? Because was this sourced fair trade? Were the workers treated Mm. properly? Mm. I'm not kidding. This happened. Mm. Eventually, what happens is in a democracy, there is only a tiny percentage that actually wants the outcome. And the majority of people compromise with each other to create some wacky outcome that makes no sense. The end result was the vote that won was recycled fair trade plastic bins that are bought off of Craigslist and you can't spend more than X amount. So what happened? Well, that's clearly impossible. So the people who had access to the money just went to, I, went, I believe they went to a supermarket, like a department store and just bought standard plastic bins for 20 bucks and then brought them in there and then just said, sure, we did what you, we wanted. If everybody gets a vote on how to run something, you don't get a simple majority. You get this weird amalgamation of the, of the desires of as many people as possible. And then the result is, 
How many people came out and filled out a, a form saying, I want this specific kind of plastic bin? Three out of 100. Yeah. And that's who wins in the end. That's direct yeah. democracy. Well, yeah. so this is actually something a, a good friend of mine pointed out. He said, like, if you ever tried to make dinner plans with multiple people? Hell. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's really difficult. But you know what works out really well? When, like, you're a kid and you're in the car with your parents and your dad's like here's where we're going for dinner and then you just go there and you pick what you want off the menu right, right. but but where these things always end up is one person just making the decision anyway so we're kind of fooling ourselves if we think we really have this process where everyone's actually coming together and getting what they dude, want dude i got an idea we should totally do this. so free um our new studio is done Mm -hmm. the, I should say the new structure, the building's past inspection, it is, it is done. All we're doing now is the main, the, the actual technical build out for the studio. And then we'll be there in a few weeks. We, let's make a video where we give everyone 10 options for dinner, dessert. Or let's just do this. Let's just, let's just do uh, uh, dinner. We'll say, here's a list of meats. Here's a list of carbs. Here's a list of vegetables. Vote for which one you like the most. Do you think you're going to get a delicious eggplant parmesan with fresh ricotta on top? <laughs> no, you're going to get like a beef steak with a scoop of vanilla ice cream, espresso poured around it, some asparagus stalk sticking out of it. And you're going to be like, I am not eating this. But hey, that's what everyone voted for. Mm -hmm. Most people wanted beef. Most people wanted ice cream. Most people wanted asparagus. Most people wanted espresso. And then you're going to be like, welcome to democracy. Yeah, it's, it, it's and it's been referred to as the tyranny, tyranny of the minority, right, uh, mm -hmm. under that scenario. And that's there's been a concerted effort for decades now to take control of that word and to foist it up democracy. Let's save our democracy. I mean, I get so sick and tired of seeing this, too. We're seeing democracy 2024. That's not what our country is. We're a constitutional republic. It's their country. It, that's right. And, and I've heard you say this before, where words really have meaning. And Democrats on the left are so good at co-opting that and just putting that out there time and again. When so, they when they say our democracy, they're not including you. No. That's right. They really mean our. Yeah. It, it's like the way, the way I've described it is three guys break into your house, start destroying your living room. And when you walk in and say, get out of my house, one burglar looks at the other burglar and says, he's trying to kick us out of our house. <laughs> yeah. He's not calling it your house. He's not acting like you're a part of his, his plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's absolutely right. It's it's always so funny to me because for years and years, what the left did and what they did within the popular culture is they made people laugh at these American buzzwords, right? So they said, oh, come on, conservatives and right-wingers talk about freedom and, and freedom. Just the word became a punchline. Oh, it's freedom. Oh, it's America. Uh, and of course, you say it in a Southern accent because that's, that's peak comedy. Um, and... Now they'll go, our democracy, this is about our democracy, which is hilarious. They're just, they're like throwing around these like dime store patriotic terms without actually thinking about the ideas they're expressing. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, well, why just, is this good for democracy? Why is it good for democracy to remove the front runner of the Republican primaries out of the process? Because they're saying our exactly. democracy. Exactly. They're not saying democracy. That, they're yes, saying our democracy. I agree. And that's my point. They're just throwing this around as a buzzword. No, 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 no. The elite no, know are, what no, they're doing. On. I'm but, arguing with you on this. I'm no, saying you are I, incorrect. And I'm saying that I, I don't know how much we disagree because the elite do. are using it that way. But it's I think not, your average person who hears that and throws that around or thinks it sounds good doesn't detect right. it. My point is it they're saying the fact that donald trump could win is a threat to our yes, plan that's what the press is saying. so there's a, a couple people that are running for the democratic primary and i forget the guy's name or whatever but he tweeted out me and marion williamson are not insurrectionists why are they blocking our primary and i said because you running in an election is a threat to their power structure the quote-unquote democracy they have is not a democracy of the people it's a d democratic system of the elites where they get to decide. Yes. And if you actually ran against them, you would threaten their power structure. Absolutely. I I'm not talking about that. I agree with you that they have a kind of oligarchy and they're trying to preserve their power. But when the reason they seize onto these words like democracy is because they know your average person who doesn't have time to research or think about these things hears that and goes like, oh, democracy, that's a good word. This is about democracy. Yeah, yeah. I, th I, th I think to a certain degree. But my point is that they're literally saying we are trying to build a new communist system yep. that we we would call like like North Korea calls their country the Democratic Republic of North Korea. Yeah, yeah good point.
People's Republic so, of China. So right? they're saying it, our democracy is. They may as well be saying our communist dictatorship. Mm -hmm. They say they're saying this election, communist dictatorship is on the ballot. They call it democracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's a nice word. He used good word. He's I like when he uses good word. When he used good word, he's right, right? This goes, this goes back. You're against good word? This I, goes back, yes, I am against good word. Um, this goes back to, uh, <laughs> this goes back to, yes, I, to the, the point about Maoism, because that was something that Mao said. Like, communism is, it, the idea of communism is pure democracy. He's not entirely and, wrong. You know, and, and it, it, it will destroy the republic, which is the intent, you know, the, and there's, as for, it's frustrating when you talk to people that, get their news from Jon Stewart or from Comedy Central and they believe all of the 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 messages that are coming out of Comedy Central and that's that's really one of the most damaging things that, mm. that that's happened to the to the US has been the ability of of the daily show to just feed people the most insane propaganda and have the most ridiculous framing of anything conservative and it's really been toxic because it's affected the way that people like you were saying about freedom and stuff the way that people perceive things that are fundamental to the united well, states and the left really does has gotten to the point where they hate america they hate liberalism you talk to any leftist and they they don't call themselves liber liberals they call themselves progressives so, i like uh, jimmy kimmel on this really long rant about aaron Rodgers, <laughs> and it was the stupidest thing ever because he was like calling someone a pedo isn't an opinion and he threatened to sue Aaron Rodgers. But then he goes on to say he read about the Dunning-Kruger effect where people are too stupid to realize they're stupid. He said ignorant. But I love this because uh, he should have talked to his lawyer because publicly stating that you believe the person who defamed you is too stupid to realize they defamed you is an affirmative defense for the person who defamed you under Times <laughs> v. Sullivan. In which case, if he ever did sue, Aaron Rodgers could say, Jimmy Kimmel admitted it. I genuinely believed what I had said. And you know That's what? It. Case dismissed. You know, um, Jimmy Kimmel also made a dig at him <clears throat> for going to community college, which is hysterical. Yeah. How many of these leftists complain about how expensive college is and about how horrible the student debt crisis is, only to turn around and laugh at people who took responsibility and said, I'm going to go somewhere less expensive? They're going to go I, somewhere I, I, where I won't rack up a lot of debt. None of them I, believe any of the things exactly. they're saying. It's all about status. It's all That's about right. hierarchy. It's I, all about kissing their own butts. I want to point out, right. Aaron Rodgers never said Jimmy Kimmel was on the list. He said Jimmy Kimmel is probably worried the list may come out. And the interpretation by most people was that he yeah. was implying Kimmel was on the list. Maybe. Or I stated this before the Epstein documents were released, and there's more coming out every day. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel came out and said, I've never met with Epstein. I never flew on his plane. Well, Aaron Rodgers didn't say that. But I actually think there's a very good reason that Jimmy Kimmel was sweating bullets over these documents. And that is, it has been reported that he was in business with, uh, what's the guy's name? Andrew Perry Lang. He was in business with Epstein's personal chef hmm. who owned a restaurant. I think it was called APL. Jimmy Kimmel was good friends with him. Jimmy Kimmel may be worried about the release of this, not because he's on the list, he could be peripherally mentioned, but because his good friend is on the list. So Aaron Rodgers said a very basic statement, which probably is true. Huh. Jimmy Kimmel has reason to be worried. And and it's not just uh, Perry Lang. It's many people in Hollywood who may appear on these lists who are friends with Jimmy Kimmel. So if those lists come out and it turns out that a good friend of Jimmy Kimmel was deeply involved in what's going on with Epstein, and it's true, this guy was Epstein's personal chef, Jimmy Kimmel may be worried that could damage his brand or his net worth yeah. or something, even though he's not accused of being a pedo. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.